taped in front of a live classroom audience. This is the Here We Go Rapid Review of Contracts for Sales of Goods under UCC Article 2. Audio with optional slides designed especially for exercising or commuting. This is Big Principles, UCC Applicability and Hierarchy of Rules. Here we go. Oh, that, that, that's good work. We applaud because that's how we prove we're in front of a live classroom audience. So let's start with some general observations and concerns and pay attention during this part because these general principles and things can help you reason your way through a lot of the details that come up later. Here's some big overarching principles. First of all, this is my slogan in teaching sales, is that the UCC wants deals to happen. UCC is the Uniform Commercial Code. It wants deals to happen. It's like, commercial is my middle name, literally. It, UCC wants deals to happen, and that explains a lot of the rules we see. The UCC cares very much about freedom of contract, letting the parties decide the rules and the terms for themselves. But the UCC thinks that setting out a bunch of default rules that are sensible will help people make more deals and make those deals faster. Also, the UCC thinks that merchants are special and that merchants have their big kid pants on and they can take care of themselves better than ordinary buyers and sellers. Merchants come up several times, so let's talk about who counts as a merchant. The UCC says that you're a merchant if you deal in goods of the kind or otherwise by your occupation hold yourself out as having knowledge or skill peculiar to the practices or goods involved in the transaction or to whom that knowledge or skill would be attributed by your employment. So in other words, if you buy a set of tires from the tire store on the corner, that's a merchant. If you buy a set of tires at a garage sale, the person holding the garage sale is not a merchant. You wouldn't expect the person at the garage sale to know anything about tires. So about the UCC and its sales law. UCC stands for the Uniform Commercial Code. It was created by two organizations cooperating, the Uniform Law Commission and the American Law Institute. It derives its legal authority from being enacted by the legislature in a given jurisdiction. It's not, it doesn't have any authority by itself, it's got to be enacted into law. Article 1 of the UCC is definitions and generally applicable provisions. Article 2 is sales of goods. Then there's other articles you can attack uh, on secured transactions or banking or other exciting things, leases. Article 2 on sales of goods has been adopted in 49 states, not Louisiana, and in the District of Columbia and various territories and tribal jurisdictions. There are many variations among its provisions as it's been enacted. So, ironically, it's not actually uniform, uh, even though that's its first name. It is statute, not common law. So if you have questions about the meaning of words or what the law requires, your first stop is to look at the statutory text. It is often answered right in there instead of using logic or policy rationales or analogies to cases. That includes Article 1 where the definitions are. So if you're doing sales of goods, you need to look at Article 1 for those definitions. The UCC is supplemented by the common law and by equitable principles. So if something's not covered by the statute, then you can think about common law and equity. That's where fraud, for instance, comes into transactions about sales of goods. And again, the UCC cares about freedom of contract. So many of its provisions can be altered by agreement, although there's some things that you can't con contract around, such as fraud such as the statute of frauds, that'd be silly. Well, it's not in writing because we agreed that it didn't have to be in writing. That wouldn't make any sense. So there's, there's some things you can't contract around. So should you apply UCC Article 2 to the transaction in front of you? That's the first question we have to tackle. The UCC Article 2 applies to sales of goods. What are goods? Goods are things that are movable at the time they are identified to the contract generally. It includes things that you don't normally think of as goods like food served in a restaurant, maybe industrial gases, big and small wide body aircraft, pencils, iron ore, that's all goods. It does not include services, real property, land, houses. It does not include stocks and bonds and securities. It does not include leases. That's actually covered in Article 2A of the UCC. 
A lot of contracts involve both goods and services. You contract to have some machine installed in your factory and they're going to deliver, you're going to get the machine, they're going to deliver it, they're going to install it, they're going to teach you how to use it. It's a mixture of goods and services. You have to pick, if you're a court and you have a dispute about this, you have to pick either the UCC or the common law of contracts to govern that transaction. So how do you do that? You apply one of two tests. The first test, which almost all courts apply, is the predominant purpose test. That you look at, at the time of contracting, what was the predominant purpose of the contract? What were they really after? Were they really after the good or the services? You have to make a determination. There's also a gravamen test, which is not used by a lot of courts, but it looks at the dispute. It looks at the gripe that the, that the party has. Uh, that's the gravamen test. So you do that, and then you decide whether or not you're dealing with the UCC. If you're not dealing with the UCC, then you know you can stop and go to the common law of contracts because that's not what I'm talking about right now. Update. 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 The ULC and ALI, the entities that drafted the Uniform Commercial Code, came out with amendments in 2022. These amendments have been adopted in many states. The amendments add a provision to Section 2102 that prescribes a test for figuring out whether UCC Article 2 applies to mixed goods services contracts, which the UCC calls hybrid transactions. Before I tell you the rule, I'll tell you how to remember it. The ULC and ALI picked a rule that kind of follows the trend of the law that states are already using, but they did so with a tweak that maximizes the applicability of their work. You know the expression, he who makes the rules wins? Essentially, this new 2102 adopts a tweaked version of the predominant purpose test that makes sure the UCC either wins completely or wins partially. Here's how it works. In a hybrid transaction, first you ask which predominates, the sale of goods aspects or the non-sale of goods aspects. If the sale of goods aspects predominate, then the UCC applies. But the UCC says courts are not precluded from applying common law to the non-sale of goods aspects of the transaction. Now, if the sale of goods aspects do not predominate, then you use the common law. But the UCC mandatorily applies to the portions of the transaction that concern sales of goods. That means that no matter which way the test comes out, UCC law applies, either a little or a lot. If you think of the UCC as choosing a rule for itself that maximizes its own importance as much as it can without completely overplaying its hand, then that will help you remember this rule. Once again, figure out whether the sale of goods aspects or the non-sale of goods aspects predominate. If non-sale of goods aspects predominate, common law applies overall, but you must apply the UCC to the sale of goods aspects. If sale of goods aspects predominate, UCC law applies to the whole contract. But if the court wants to apply common law to the non-sale of goods aspects, then it can. All right. Let's talk about the hierarchy of rules to apply to a dispute about a contract over the sale of goods. You start with the terms of the agreement itself. The UCC believes in freedom of contract. You're allowed to alter the deal, including dispute resolution. So you look first at the express terms of the contract, although there are some things you can't contract around, but that's the first place to look. After that, you look at the provisions of the UCC. And then if it's not answered in there, you can look to the common law or equitable principles. The UCC does not displace those entirely.